Hello, welcome you guys. Everybody's joining. Hello, hello, welcome. Got a few more coming in. Hi there, hey Shelly. Hey Bettina, Shelly, we miss you. You need to move back. I don't like you living so far away. I'm not a fan. <laughs> Michael and Sandy, great to see you guys. Wendy, hello with your groovy background. Hi. And there's Lourdes, hello. Everybody's coming in. We are gonna have such a fun time tonight. I'm really looking forward to this. Um, let's just make sure everybody can join. And um, here comes Edie, hello Edie. There we, I just, hello, there, admit, admit, there we go. We're gonna have a pretty big group tonight. So I make sure everybody has a chance to join in. And uh, let's see here, there's Peter. Hey, Peter, good to see you. And Carla, hey, Amy, how are you? Do you know, I think about your dream all the time, Amy. I've like, that's been like one of my little data points. It's like right in there. <laughs> and Donna, hello, Bruce. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Um, hey, Edie. And Bettina, Mary, Jennifer, Vicki, hello, Susan. All right, everybody's coming in. Jamie, I know that there's a lot of people who are gonna be watching in this on the replay as well, because our timing is a little late for some. So um, for those of you who are catching this on the replay, we welcome you as well. Um, and uh, and I'm going to be monitoring the chat tonight. So as we go, if, if you guys have questions um, for Christian, you just let me know. And I will, um, uh, I'll let him know. And let me just make sure that we have everybody um, grouped here together. All right, so I believe, I believe all of you know about Wisdom Soup, but just in case you are less familiar with Wisdom Soup, um, we are a spiritual community that has been meeting now for over three years. We started here in the Seattle area back when meetups were held in person. And then we started remote broadcasting the meetings and that grew to a wider group. And now we're online. So now we literally are all over the world, which is super fun. And um, as you guys know, who are part of this group, we are a group of friends um, that, uh, that, um, that pretty much everybody that's drawn to this group we're just a bunch of super, super woo light workers. <laughs> and we go full woo with our topics. So we talk about everything from, uh, you know, from dream interpretation to past life regression to, you know, every type of, of anything in between dousing. It really, it's like whatever sounds interesting and fun. That's what we talk about. And it's about that we always are continuously learning that one of the best things we can do is we are all learners and we are all teachers. So we have so much to learn from being with each other, right? From each other and from our from our experience so um so anyway so that's i find that this this process and being part of this group um has been a big part of of my own um spiritual growth it's been super important um not only in terms of of just the subjects that we cover but also in community that you know you guys we all know that as you raise your vibration you fall out of resonance with maybe the friends that you grew up with or the people that have been in your life previously and we need our community we need our people and that's why we have groups like wisdom soup so and we do meet every every month every the second thursday of every month but for next month we are going to meet two days early because many of you guys know I have channeled some information about about events that may unfold on 11 11. Um, and if you don't know about that, please go to my YouTube channel. I'm not going to go into that because that's a whole subject. I'm not going to go into that tonight, but um, but that's on my YouTube channel, which is uh, you can search my name Ann Tucker on YouTube and hear all of the channelings on that event and what's coming. But uh, but we may not to be able to have our usual, the, the timing of that next month's meetup, maybe it might be an unfortunate timing. <laughs> so we're going to move it up a couple days. So I'll, I'll make sure I post that a few days early so that we all have a chance to join in and, and get together again. Um, all right, so for tonight, we have a, uh, a, a speaker I'm very, very excited about, Christian Sundberg, and he has um, a, he is very modest himself, and he thinks that what he knows is not that interesting, and I think it's incredibly fascinating, and I think you guys will agree with me and not with him. <laughs> <laughs> it is, uh, he is one of the few people that I've ever met who has an incredibly clear memory of experiences that he had on the other side. 
Um, and I, I'm super excited for him to share those memories and stories with us tonight. Um, and there's still a few more people joining us. But um, let me go ahead and uh, get you in. So Christian, you are already all set. Your video is on. So Christian, I'd like to introduce you if you would introduce yourself. Sure. Before I introduce myself and I get started, I, I think it'd be really cool with this group, with all the energy I feel here, if we could just take 30 seconds to just do a very, very brief meditation with each other and just set our intention together as a group, because there's, like you said, there's a lot of light workers here. Oh my goodness. And uh, the connectedness, the connection of this group is very powerful. So if we could just take 30 seconds, I think that would be really, really cool. This is an amazing group. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'll introduce myself briefly. So on the, the human side of things, I've worked for 15 years in the nuclear industry, managing projects, so nuclear valve and pump manufacturing projects. I don't um, totally you know, identify with my human work, but I guess that's how we're supposed to introduce ourselves in our, in our society. I think it's more important to speak to who we really are, uh, which is something far greater than the human. So in my case, uh, I live in Pennsylvania. Um, I lived in China for a while, um, just kind of a, a normal guy. Um, but recently in the last couple of years, I felt called to share some uh, pre-birth memory that had returned to me in my early thirties. I'm, I'm 40 now. And when I was a young child before the age of five or six, I had clear memory of my time before I was physical, before I was this human character. And I thought everybody did and nobody talked about it. So I didn't talk about it, but I used to draw upon that memory very commonly as a small child and uh, kind of cheat a little bit, you know, because I had kind of, I'd seen ahead of time what my life would be like. So I was kind of like always peeking around the curtain to get an idea of what to expect. But that memory left me at about the age of six or so, uh, six or seven for sure. And so I had no memory of that at all uh, for most of my adult life. Um, I just, I grew up with you know, kind of a standard, you know, environment and <clears throat> I learned what I was taught and all, all the rest of that. And then, and then so then my twenties, I went through a traumatic experience, which I had signed up for before I had uh, come. And uh, so I went through that experience and I did a lot of healing from that traumatic experience. And then at the age of 30, I began a long-term meditation practice and much to my surprise, um, I began to have non-physical experiences, out-of-body experiences, and I also um, began to have this memory return to me of choosing to come, you know, and my time immediately preceding this life. And when those memories returned, it was like, oh my gosh, like, this is the most natural thing in the world. How did I ever forget this? Like, <laughs> it's like right there. But, uh, but I'd forgotten, you know, because I've been so physically focused, so, so tied into all the labels and all the identity and all the rest. Um, so I felt actually for some number of years that I shouldn't speak about it. I felt like the timing just was not right. But a couple of years ago, I felt, okay, the time is right. There's enough people ready now that we can talk about this. And uh, so I did share, I shared with Mira Kelly, who is a, a wonderful woman. And uh, I shared in a couple other places and it's gotten an amazing response. I, I've met amazing people, like almost every day I'm meeting new people and it's just been an amazing uh, an amazing process. So, so I'll share and I please anybody, please do interrupt um, any thoughts or questions or ideas. This conversation is fluid. Um, everyone here is a master in their own right. Uh, so, you know, we're all in dialogue with one another. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to recount my experience and then anybody who wishes to interject, please do so. Okay. So, okay. So before I start, I just got to say that this kind of stuff is like impossible to talk about. Uh, who we truly are is beyond form. You know, we are non-physical being, we are consciousness itself, non-physical. And, and, and within the non-physical arises the world of form, arises things, objects, experiences, and, and words. 
and words then can't speak to that higher nature because they are form themselves. They're symbols. I, there's no, so there's no words I can just say that could possibly even remotely touch <laughs> the other side or, or these experiences. So I just have to make that really big disclaimer at the start. Um, okay, so that being said, uh, I remember a very long time ago, um, and again, I, these experiences all, okay, so the, they have a sequence. These experiences have a sequence, but they also are kind of happening all at once. Uh, even now, I feel like these memories are happening now. They're not so much in the, I mean, they are in the past and yet they're simultaneously now. I, I don't know how to describe that, but so my earliest memory is before I had ever been physical, coming across a being who had been physical, uh, a very powerful, beautiful being. And I was completely overwhelmed by his, the quality of his nature, by who he was. He, he was just so beautiful and full of joy and power, so much so much uh, potential and, and amazingness. And I was, I was just, I was amazed by the quality of his, his, his nature, his essence. And I, and I asked him, and again, this is telepathic because there's, you know, it's on the other, other side. How, oh my goodness. How did you do this? Like, look, look at what you are. And he shared with me that he had been a physical and he shared with me um, specifically one life that he had, that he had suffered with a, a very difficult physical ailment. Uh, I don't know what it was, but some kind of pain and, or long-term suffering. And he, the way that he met that experience was incredibly powerful. And uh, he expanded in, in an incredible way because of this experience. And I asked him, were you healed all the way? Like, as I saw how like damaged he had been. And he, and he shared with me like, yes. And I kind of sensed like uh, the depth to the, of like this, uh, you know, this damage of being physical that he'd experienced and how he had healed all of it. And, and this amazing expansion that had taken place within him. And I said, I want to do that. I want to do that. I'm going to do that. And I was so like, I was fired up. I was like, totally like committed. And he, he didn't like quite brush me off, but it was a little bit of like, yeah, that's what they all say. And I was like, no, I'm serious. I want to do that. I want, I'm going to do that. I want to, I want to go do that. I want to, I want to have that experience. I want to be physical. And he said, we'll go talk to your guides. So I did. And uh, that was, that was a long time ago because since then I had, I had many uh, physical lives and I went back and found him later and showed him, uh, not showed him, but had a converse with him and kind of shared with him. Okay. See, I'm on the path. I, I, I said, I was going to do this and here I'm doing this. Okay. So now I'm going to jump a bit because there's a, there's, there's a lot, but um, okay. So uh, now I'm going to jump to a bit that's somewhat immediately preceding this life where I had, I had taken a long break. Okay. I, I had lived many experiences and I took a long break. Like I would just decide I was done for a while. I was just not doing a physical thing for a while. I was taking a long break. And I, I remember this guide coming to me repeatedly over and over. Like, are you ready to go back yet? Are you ready to go back yet? Uh, basically like reminding me of my own intention and just trying to um, kind of nudge me back onto the path. And I, um, I, I put him off for a while and eventually I said, okay, I'm ready to go back. And <clears throat> I remember reviewing with him the state of who I was, like what I had done, what I had been, and like all these, um, this is really hard to, <laughs> it's really hard to describe all this stuff's like impossible to describe, but the qualities of what I had been and who I was. And the thing that I needed to work on was obvious. The thing that, I, and I hate to put it that way, it's not really work on, but the I could tell that I had a, uh, like, it was just very obvious. Like if you look at like a, <laughs> I don't know, like a report or something, like the one thing, like I really needed to work on was, it was like glaring. I was like, Oh yeah, I really need, I really need to, <laughs> to do that. And it involved a, a fear that I had experienced in one specific life that in that life, the fear was so profound and so powerful that it drove me to be a very uh, nasty person. I was a very, non-helpful person. I, I damaged many other people. I mean, you can't, I say damage, you can't truly, the soul can't truly be damaged. We can't be damaged. But in the life, I had caused a lot of damage because of this fear. And it, I ended up dying in a very painful, agonizing way. Uh, and so, and so I, I was surprised at how incredibly deep that fear had been for me, how, how deep that fear that was in me. And so I wanted to re-engage that fear. And as I reviewed this, I knew the, oh my gosh, the incredible amount of expansion that would be possible if I could, if I could do this, if I could meet this fear and integrate this certain energy to this degree, I just knew it would be 
unspeakably beautiful and powerful if I could do that. But it was, so, but even then I could see the, the vibrational distance was so extreme that I remember asking the guy, is it even possible? Like, has anyone, in, has any other being in, in creation ever done this? Has, has any other being ever done something this extreme in this kind of way? And, and he said, yes. And, uh, and, and it was, there's like this encouraging, like, and you have all time to do so. Like, there's no, there's no hurry. So, um, so I knew, and this sounds kind of, as a human, this sounds kind of alien to me, but at the time, I just knew with complete confidence, it, if it can be done, I will do it. If it can be done, I will do it. I knew that I had that ability. So with that being said, they brought me a life that was uh, really perfect for this intention of mine. And so I reviewed this life and it was perfect. Uh, it was like almost as good as they get. And I, ex and I accepted the life and I accepted the veil. Okay, so the veil of forgetfulness, this process of incarnating is what I remember the most out of all of this. And that process is uh, very abrupt and shocking. <laughs> so in this life, I accepted the veil, the veil came over me, and then I was in the womb. But, okay, so when the veil came over me, I felt my knowing be cut off. I felt my vibration plummet from great heights down to uh, the low, 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 lower and lower and go lower still, and then lower still more, keep going lower and lower. And then you finally get there. And when you're there, it's so low, it's ridiculous. And you're cut off. I mean, at least for me, I was, I felt cut off and I felt like I didn't have that connectedness with other people anymore, other beings anymore. I didn't have my knowing anymore. And it was terrifying. And I wasn't even born yet. I was just in the womb. And I was like, I was terrified. And I, and I was only there for a very, very short time. And I said, you know what? I'm not doing this. This is, this is not happening. I mean, this is so ridiculous. This is so low vibration. This is so dark. I am not doing this. And I summoned my might and I smote the veil. I smote, I fought my way out. And, uh, and I succeeded in doing that. I, but, and so I was on the other side again, but I had killed the fetus. I had killed the body that was to be mine. Uh, and, uh, and I had, and, you know, thinking about it now, you and I, I, and I feel, I feel responsible for that. I feel sadness because at, when I got to the other side, I had a life review, even for that very short life, I had a life review and I reviewed, I remember seeing the mother and all the hundreds of other people that would be negatively impacted. Well, I, I could feel how I negatively impacted the mother. I heaped more difficulty on her through the sorrow of her loss. And also hundreds of other people then that would, their lives would be made more difficult because I had made the mother's life more difficult. And I, I couldn't believe I was like, well, I mean, I, it's really hard to describe, but I went in with great intentions. Like I had all these good intentions. I had this big plan, you know, and then I just, just and then my fear was so great that right at the beginning, I, I caused that. And I, not only did I not succeed in my intention, but I caused the, the game to be more difficult for the players that I so loved and respected. That was how I, I'm, I mean, I'm using metaphors now. It's not quite like that, but so I was disappointed. In, I mean, I knew everything was okay. Everything was on the other side, you know, everything is well, it, it's okay. But, um, and I was disappointed that I had let that happen. So I, um, so I decided to, before I intend, before I attempted this again, because I knew, I, I knew I would want to try again. Um, before I did that, I, I practiced um, accepting the veil because I didn't want to have that. I didn't want to do that same thing again. So um, I, I remember going to this place that can only be described as like, I don't know, a, a veil acceptance simulator room. Uh, it was like a place you go where they, they, you practice surrendering to the veil and having your knowing cut off uh, and feeling separate and dark and alone. And you, it's kind of like diving into a pool and then, and then seeing how long you can stay underwater. And then, and then, but if, because this is just a trainer, you can jump back out if you get too scared, you know, but you practice. Um, and I remember practicing and uh, basically it had to do with my willingness to feel the fear and my willingness to allow and not resist. So after doing that, they brought me this life. And um, this life was not as optimal as the first one would have been. 
Uh, it was still good. It was quite good. But each life is only so good because the, the soul, the spirit, has is rather complex in what makes it up. And in my case, I just knew I had many qualities and like a certain there's like a certain type of my nature, and that nature has to like interface with the life somehow, and then that has to work within the context of what you're trying to do, what you want to do. And this life was pretty good. You know, it wasn't perfect, but it was it was good. It was good. So I remember reviewing this life in great detail and reviewing what I can only describe as a vast flow chart or like a, like a tree of uh, all the things that might or could or would happen in, my, in this life. And there were, it started like kind of like if you imagine a tree like tipped on its side, like kind of like thicker trunk and then like it went out to branches and there's all these, some paths were very likely, some paths were a lot less likely, but it wasn't about events well there i mean there were definitely events in it but it wasn't so much about events as how it would feel how it would be to be that like how will it be to be that person in these different possible avenues of how this life might unfold and i went through millions of possibilities all within the blink of an eye it was easy to do that i was i remember reviewing just tons of huge amounts of information all at once and um and i knew even then that it was very likely that I would experience a trauma in my 20s that would crush me and that would help facilitate uh, my opportunity to re-experience this fear that I wanted to re-experience and integrate. Um, so I was super excited to, to do this, to accept this, even though I knew it would be hard. Um, I, and I knew that the body, this body, had certain limitations that other bodies do not. And that this body would be difficult in a certain ways on a day-to-day -day level that would like challenge my ego or something. It would make it difficult for me in a way that I, I would be forced to um, turn inward and I would have to find strength. <laughs> and also I wouldn't be, because I, I had, it's hard to explain, but I had a sense that I, it would be challenging enough to the ego that I would, I would have to, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to go totally down the ego path because it would be too challenging. So anyway, I reviewed all this and I, uh, I remember there having to be a moment to accept and I don't remember that moment, but I, but I do remember after that, uh, waiting, uh, for this to start the life. And I was, uh, I remember being in a state where I was still timeless and it was wonderful. And I remember the, I remember this light and this powerful light. And then I remember my, the guy coming to me and being like, all of a sudden, and not not rude, but almost rude, like now, go now. You have to go now, right now. You know, like <laughs> getting my attention, like super, like now, buddy. And so I was like, okay, now. So then, I, I, the next thing is, I was at these beings that I can only describe as tinkerers or technicians. These beings who they're like technical in nature, and they helped apply the veil to me. So it, they do this. I don't know how to describe it. There's this thing like the like the spirit has certain nature and qualities and the life has certain something going on and the body and they have to like do this thing where it like, I don't know, they make everything fit <laughs> somehow. So they were doing that and uh, they asked me one more time, are you sure? And I knew that this was the point of no return. And if I said yes to here, I was, I was in, I was in for the ride, I was strapped in. And I remember saying yes. Uh, and, uh, and, and then the veil coming over me again. And, uh, okay, so this time I just, my intention was, okay, just don't fight it. <laughs> just, just let go, don't resist, just allow. Uh, and, and I remember, okay, so like this, this drop in vibration is meaningful to, to uh, explain, but if you, I don't know, just this is a metaphor, but if you imagine like an amp that produces a pitch, like, you know, and then you'd have a bow and you turn it down and it turns down well it turned all the way down and then turned down more and more and more and more and more and more and keep cranking it down and, you know keep going and that's how it felt in the vibration of the being coming down into this super dense super tight super cut off uh you know like a like going to the vacuum of space i think is a good metaphor i like to use it's like you go to a place where there's just no heat and no air <laughs> there's just it's just empty space that's how it felt, but also super dense, like coming down and being shoved into a tuna can, you know, like a fish can. <laughs> and 
it was incredibly uh, jarring, but I just strove not to, not to fight it. And um, okay, so one of the things I had asked before I, in, in the review process was I had asked to have a small amount of memory this time. I said, I don't wanna forget everything. I wanna have just a tiny, tiny little amount of memory, just a tiny little bit, you know? And, and they said I could do that. They had said that I could do that, but it would make it more challenging. It would make this life more difficult because the contrast would be even greater. Uh, and at the time I knew that even that contrast was, was like all contrast, an opportunity for growth. So I accepted. So anyway, as the veil came over me now, I was, I was feeling this and there was like this little window open that I, I, I surmise, I don't know for certain, but I think had to do with that request because I had this like little window open that was not veiled all the way. And I remember like holding on for a super long time and being like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And sending a signal back through the window, did it take back to the technicians and, uh, and then sending one, sig one, word, one, back, one signal back, yes. So I knew that the veil had been successfully applied. And I, so, I, so I allowed myself to uh, be in the womb uh, in peace and for a while. So then I was there for a while, okay? And it was all good. And then eventually I said, I'm not doing this. This is like, the, I, once again, the darkness and the cutoffness and the, and the lack of connectedness. And the, I was like, this stuff, I'm not doing this again. So again, I reached this point where I'm like, this is ridiculous. This is just so ridiculous. So at that moment, I began to summon my energy again so that I could fight my way out again. Um, but as that happened, at this very humbling moment and it's like the most holy it's the most holy precious memory for me but um i remember the spirit of god coming to me and showing me that i was still well showing me what i was i was still all that is it showed me the stars and the solar system and i remember feeling the churning of the sun and the and the um uh, the joy of that and knowing that it was still me. And, and the spirit said to me, this is still what you are. You can never not be this. It's the most holy thing for me to remember because that's what we really are. That's what all of us really are. And it, so it's very hard to remember that now because I feel deep in the human experience right now. I'm, I'm not close to there right now. I'm deep in the weeds. But, uh, but at the time, it, um, it calmed me a lot and I, it, made me, uh, it, it made me relax. And I was like, oh, good. Oh, that's good. I'm still that. That's good. So then I relaxed. And as I did that, I just was able to let go and experience the uh, simple, relatively simple experience of being in the womb. <laughs> okay, so then the next memory is the day I was born. I remember, I remember the day I was born. I remember, um, I remember just one visual image of the room after I was out. And I remember seeing the layout of the room. And then when I was older, I drew the room from my mother. And I said, you were here, the, the bed was here, here was the window, here was the heating grate, here was the doctor. And she said I was right, which I knew I, I would be. Um, but beside the visual memory, that wasn't the most important memory. The most important memory was just like the, the experience, the shock. Uh, there was no context yet. Like I was just, I had no, I had no intellectual context whatsoever. I was like a clean slate. So I just, it was just sense data and stuff going on. There was cold and shock and light and touching and <laughs> very intense sense data. And I remember being intensely curious and looking around and being like, what is this place? Where am I? And looking at these beings who are taking care of me or doing whatever they're doing and being in awe of them and actually feeling love for them. And actually it's funny because just last week I was talking to my, my father about this memory. And, uh, and he said, that's interesting. He said, because the day you were born, your eyes were wide open. And he said, you were looking at everything with such an intenseness and an intense curiosity and he said he couldn't believe that such a young baby could have such an intense, uh, you know, curiosity. And I remember that. I remember being like, what is this? <laughs> so after that, I don't have any memory for years after that first day. I mean, I have 
some very vague memories of looking up at the, the you know, my crib, looking up at the dangly thing that's supposed to get my attention and being happy when my mother came to get me and some brief memories like that. But when I got older, um, when I was, I remember being like, you know, two or three and just assuming everybody knew that we weren't really from here. This was just a neat experience and a neat place. We came to have an experience. And I assumed that many things in the other realities would be true here. Um, and, and the example I, I, I mentioned in the other video was, um, I remember, I remember assuming that we could feel each other's emotions here because in other reality systems, you just share feelings and information and it's all telepathic and it's just an open channel. So I remember being in a diaper one day and my parents had a friend over uh, who was a neighbor. And I remember that my father had a record on the record player and he was playing uh, a, a song I really liked. And I remember dancing to the song and feeling really funky and shaking my little tush in my diaper and saying to the neighbor, watch me dance because I wanted her to feel what I was feeling. And she walked away unimpressed. And I remember this like dawning on me, like she can't feel what I'm feeling. Like <laughs> what is going on? Like, what is this place? where we can't feel each other's emotions. Like what the heck is going on? <laughs> it's just so foreign. And I, I had other assumptions that I thought would be true here. And even, even to this day, I feel like there's certain things about this world that I mean, I just don't get. Like it's just not normal. Certain things that happen here are just not Nate, not where we're typically used to being. Like um, another example I like to use is like, uh, I assumed that people who were in positions of authority or power were loving and wise beings because in other reality systems, the powerful, and the, you know, I don't wanna use the word positions, but beings who are in roles of authority or, or helpfulness, they're loving and wise. So I assumed that to be true here. Like if you were teaching a classroom, you must be a loving and wise being. And if you were like the mayor of a city, you must be even more loving and wise. And if you're the president of the United States, you must be the most loving and wise person well, that's not how it works on Earth. <laughs> it's just that's not how it happens. Um, so eventually, like I said, the memories passed, and um, I had no uh, no memory of that at all until I was thirty, and then this began to return to me. And as it did, I um, you know, there's been moments of curiosity where I'll go to a memory and be like, "Oh, what else?" And I just get this nudge, like, "No, you don't need to know anything else." It's, this is, and there's there's a reason that the veil is because the veil. I'm so I'm very thankful. That I'm veiled because even having a tiny glimmer is just, it can be very painful. Um, so, um, so that's a, that's a summary. Um, it's really, again, it's really hard to talk about these things because they're way bigger than anything words can, can say. And we like to think of things from the human perspective. So we like to think in terms of objects and events and places and uh, what did that look like? And where did you go? And yeah, but the, but the whole physical universe that we're in right here is, something of a virtual reality. It's something of a, it's, it's occurring within our consciousness itself that pre-existed and will exist after the constraints of this physical experience are done. Um, so, so that being said that those reality systems and those, those experiences, um, they're just so um, transcendent by comparison next to what we can possibly say here. Exactly. I went on for a long time. I'm sorry. No, it's amazing. I, I didn't want to interrupt you because I just, I, to me, it's like this, the story is just so incredible. Um, so what, um, it's actually not incredible because I, I, I just have to say that because every person here yes. has, has done that and more, <laughs> like but that's the part there's nothing you're... unique. There's nothing at all unique about me at all. I think that's what's and so I, and I feel like it's like, oh, well, that's so interesting. You know, no, it's not. It's very normal. <laughs> so everything I'm just describing is very normal. We are non-physical beings having a human experience. It's just what we are. And we've all gone through incredible journeys. But I think that's what's oh, amazing okay, sorry, about it. Back to you. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's to think that we've all done that. Like to have you explain it and for all of us to understand as you're talking about this experience, for each of us to know that we've done that. And that well, we're you've done something just, similar. I, I can't speak for you, of yeah. course, but you've done I very likely that everyone has had, I mean, I feel like it's very likely that everybody's had a similar process. I can only yeah. speak for myself, but yes, all of us, um, we all come intentionally. There's, so that is a really important point. There's no such thing as an incarnation without free will agreement. 
Right. There, there's always agreement. <laughs> right. So all of us agreed, even though we don't remember and everything, even though we're veiled, and Earth is super, super dense. Um, you know, we did agree to come here. Yeah. And I, I've heard, and I think many of us have heard the description before of what it is to be born and to, to, to accept the veil, but, but I've never heard it in a first person before. I've never heard someone. So that's what makes it feel so it's so real. It's visceral. That is so exciting that it's not just theory. You know, I hear theory, I hear, you know, the description from, and this is, this is like, you know, you talking about, I went down to the Seven Eleven and bought, you know, a soda and yeah. And I accepted the veil which is like, it's yeah. like, it's real. Um, it, it is real. It, it, and it's, it's interesting because I think a lot of, so in spirituality in general, you know, I think we tend to kind of think about it a little bit, like we put it in this conceptual bucket and it's over there somewhere, you know, it's like this abstract thing. Well, okay, we're spirits, but we're really on earth. I really see what's in front of me. Okay. But there's some, you know, there's angels and there's other reality. No, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, actually this place, this experience is the less real experience. And, and, and we all kind of know that, you know, we all kind of sense this is not quite all that's going on. This is like the dream. This is what I like to call it like a black and white movie. It's real, but it's not fundamentally real. It's not the most real. And, and where we come from and who we really are is what is, is, is far more real. And it's very, it's very normal. It's not, it's not like, you know, woo woo fairy tale, like, Oh, that's weird religious stuff. No, no. <laughs> we are more than human. <laughs> it's just that here on earth, it's very normal to be very heavily veiled, especially yeah. because of like just the way that we've, the, the nature of this reality and, the, and what we've done with it and the way that we you play with this dense of form. It's just the way that it works, that, that we uh, feel completely immersed in it. But yeah, we're, that's not really what we are. <laughs> One question that came in was um, uh, from Wendy. She was asking about, so when you took on this life, the fact that there was, you said there was some ego challenge, was that, was that complementary to your purpose or was that part of your purpose? Um, I think it was complementary, and I think it was both because it, it complemented the growth, but it was also very much important that I do that because if I wasn't challenged in that way, I don't think I would have the ability to meet the the big kahuna fear when it arrived like i needed to have a day-to-day -day, uh, challenge to be able to be in a, in a place where i can meet the fear and, and like another thing i know that ha had to happen is i knew that my father was important because i knew that my father would instill a confidence in me he would build up my confidence a lot as a child and that that confidence would be really important for me to have a rock to stand on to face this fear and he did that. Mm. I, I also knew that uh, it was important that I be male, not that male. So I had some people make comments after that. I mentioned this in the other video, and they said, "What about you know females can accept?" Of course, that's not what that's not what I'm saying. It's just that the female and the male energy are just different, and there's a certain kind of an edge that I needed. That I call even an obtuse edge or something. But I just needed a certain edge to be able to meet the fear in the way that I needed to meet it, and nothing that's nothing to do with male or male or men or women being better or worse at <laughs> anything like that. Uh, I just knew that it was important that I be male. Anyway, yeah. those were just other examples of things that were important for me to be able to meet fear. Yeah. Um, uh, a couple of questions came through. Um, Donna is asking, why is it necessary that we hide from our true selves? Okay. So if you weren't veiled, you would be the unveiled you. And the unveiled you is connected to all that is and is, is unlimited and is full of has no limitations, no, it's full of power <laughs> and connectedness. And there is no, uh, there's no duality to strive against in that because that's, you are, you are transcendent of that. So to put it, I'll put it in a uh, uh, mundane way. So like, so if you knew that you were the sun, I like to use the sun because that's what I experienced in my, uh, in, my in the womb experience. But if you knew that you were connected to the sun, like tangibly, not just as like an intellectual idea, but you could feel the sun in your being and you could feel its, its bliss and you knew that you were the stars and you knew that nothing could, could you get up in the morning and, and eat your cereal and drive to work? No, you, you wouldn't because you'd be the sun. <laughs> you wouldn't be you. So if you <laughs> want to be you, if you want to be the separate you, then it's, it's actually very, it's a huge opportunity to be veiled 
because it means that now there's this unique uh, perspective from which that you can integrate from. And that perspective is an incredible opportunity for expansion. Which, there's a, okay, this is an important idea. So and, and again, I'm, I'm drawing a line because in duality, but because I'm in, we're in duality right now, but this is beyond duality. But so you got source. Okay, so if you imagine that as like a sun or something, a source of light, if you can go like this far away from source or this far or this far vibrationally, and then you can integrate that experience and be fully there, then, then there's this expansion that takes place. <laughs> this is so beyond words. That's very, very, very powerful. And that's only possible if, uh, if you are the human immersed all the way in the human character. It's exactly that immersion. It's exactly that consistency and the denseness of the experience that gives it the edge that permits the expansion that we are looking for. So, achieve. so is it the finding our finding our way back to source from so far a distance is what causes the expansion of spirit? I I think that's a I think that's a natural I think that's going to happen naturally as one does that. Mm -hmm. It's not that the goal is simply to find one's way back to source because you're already source. Mm -hmm. You're already the the drop in the ocean is still the ocean. You are still the ocean right now. <laughs> like you're, you're not actually separate. This is a really important point. None of us are actually separate from each other. We are not separate from God or source, whatever word you want to use, we're not. Okay, so, but though, if we come into this defined experience and we want to integrate this experience and integrate means we, we fully experience it, we bring love to it, we, we bring openness to it, we learn how to be our true loving joyful selves in that experience whatever it is as we do that the expansion naturally happens and we naturally end up returning because we were already there in the first place <laughs> i don't know how else to put it um a question is uh one person was uh, wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing what the fear was that you needed to overcome if you're okay if that's you know if it's universal yeah absolutely no, absolutely um well i'm still in the process of integrating this fear. It's too, it's too big to do all at once, but I've, I've taken very important steps in this life to do that. Um, so, so when we talk about fears and from the human perspective, we like to say a fear of something, you know, like a fear of spiders or <laughs> something. It's bigger than that. It's like a vibration. It's a state of being in which one is uh, distant from source in a certain vibrational way. And the way that I could best describe that would be and this has to do with the negative self-perception, okay? Because fears ultimately arise from a, uh, a negative, either a negative self-perception or a perception that's negative about the world. So there's always some, we, a fear is always because we bought into some perception that is not in alignment with the truth. So, so the truth is we are powerful. When we buy into the perception of powerlessness, we feel fear. The truth is we are loved. When we buy into the idea that we are not loved, we feel fear. Anyway, in my, in my case, this specific fear was a fear of um, inability to escape agony mixed with being too proud to suffer. So reject, so being stuck in pain and, and being too proud to, to uh, like, like kind of like stuck in pain and like, and not, and, and, uh, and resisting it. So because that was the fear, I have had some very interestingly painful experiences <laughs> in this life, which is okay. It's okay because ultimately there's no experience that I choose to not reject any experience. That's my goal because there is no need to reject any of the experiences. But in my case, I was in Chengdu, China, and I, I intended to live in China after I graduated from college. And um, I, in this case, physically what happened was I had a heat stroke and I was in a Chinese hospital for four days and I was given a large amount of potassium, potassium bag after bag, after bag, after bag of potassium. And it caused some kind of uh, neurological burn in my whole system that was absolutely agonizing. And I was stuck in that for, for weeks. Uh, I also, um, my body had a whole bunch of other problems and it, it was just agony. And I suffered trauma from that. I was in a hotel room in China for a while. I had lived in China and Beijing in, in the year 2000. This is 2002 that this experience happened. And um, 
that experience went on for a while and I was traumatized from it. I went through years of counseling to face the feelings and the fears and the sensations that I experienced in that moment. See, see, I'm a, I'm a really sensitive person. And uh, actually, actually that goes in hand in hand with having some memory of, of pre-life and because I knew that if I wanted to have some memory of pre-life, I'd have to be very sensitive. <laughs> and so, so the experience was even, was just very intense. I experienced everything pretty intensely. So, um, the, the, the moment that I rejected for many years was a moment I was laying in a hospital bed in China and I felt like I was going to die and there was no way to escape this pain. And I was it. It was a very, very, very dark, low vibrational moment. Um, so yeah, I, I don't, I no longer have trouble viewing it. Now I have set an incredible amount of things into momentum in my own experience because <laughs> we set momentum with our intention <laughs> and with our beliefs. It creates a momentum and things arrive into our experience from that. And so there are moments when I have, uh, you know, some, some serious, you know, I say serious, but I have some significant pain at times, but that's okay. I, uh, I don't resist. I'm not, uh, reality is not, see, reality is not our enemy. <laughs> so as things arrive to us, we can allow them and feel them and meet them with openness. And I'm, I'm striving to do that. I love that. I think that is, that's a message I keep getting over and over again to allow what comes. Yeah. To see what arises and to accept it and to work with it. Um, the, another question that came in is, did we uh, pre-choose our career path as well, or is it insignificant in the soul journey for our profession? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> I can't say categorically. I can say in my case, I had no memory of well, I should, I should say pre-life, I had no memory of the job I would do. But as a child, I actually, it's interesting, I had an intuitive moment where I picture this one room where I would have a business meeting. And then like, I forgot about that. And a few years ago, I was in this room having this meeting and I had this moment where it came back to me. I'm like, holy crap, I saw this like, <laughs> I saw this like 30 years ago. So, so this, but that's, see this, the, the, the system spirit is very good at predicting outcome <laughs> because it has all the data. Uh, but anyway, so I, I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if I think for some people, I imagine that in their pre-life plan, doing a certain physical work is going to be very important for them. Uh, I, I imagine that's definitely true for some people. I, I just I just know in my case, it didn't come up. So Sheila was asking you um, uh, when you were talking about the the first, the being who inspired you to come in the first place, yeah. um, that that person was so powerful and positive. And she's wondering um, that, what was that relative to? So she's curious about, about hierarchy on the other side and what does that look and feel like? Okay. So I won't, I won't try to speak to hierarchy overall on the other side, but I, but I will just say that love is the, is the, uh, the hierarchy. So, so in my case, okay. So like, um, I think a metaphor would help. So if you had like, let's say you took a beautiful maple leaf from a tree and you put it next to a large flowering grapevine, which one is better? Well, they're just different. Sure, one is bigger and has more grapes, and, but this one's beautiful too. That's kind of like how spirit is. Each, each, each spirit is gorgeous and unique and, and, and meaningful. Uh, but in this case, in comparison to what I could do <laughs> at the time, this being was incredibly powerful. Actually, that reminds me of an interesting quote from Bob Monroe. Uh, he's an out-of-body explorer. Many people here are probably familiar with Robert, Robert Monroe's books. He said something like, beings who graduated from the physical universe experience were like gods in other systems. Now, it's not that we come here to be powerful. It's that as we grow in joy and love, and as we conquer fear, power is the natural result, especially in other systems that are much less constraining. This is the constraining, super <laughs> crazy place. So if we can master things here, holy cow, we got it. Like we got it made when the, <laughs> when it's a lot easier, that kind of thing. It's like metaphorically, if you go and, I don't know, you, you go run a marathon, it's not hard for you to jog a quarter of a mile. It's not, you know, you've already run a marathon. <laughs> it's kind of like that. What is it to be powerful on the other side? Is it to be, what, what do you use that power for? What do you, are you, what are you doing? 
So there are different reality systems and uh, there are different rules in them. And most of the, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not like a avid out of body explorer. I don't have tons of experience, but in the experience I've had and, and from, from my pre-birth memory, my understanding is that many other systems are thought responsive, intent responsive. And the, the nature of who we are immediately has an effect on the environment or on what we can do. So when consciousness evolves, its capabilities in those environments evolve. Now that, that's like more of a tangible, you're asking power, like what can it do? You said, what can it do? So that's more like, to me, that means more like something tangible. So in a reality system, there's a, a way that the spirit can better execute, uh, better, I don't know, uh, actualize, I guess, its nature when it has evolved. I'll put it that way. But power overall, the true power is love, beingness itself. That is, that is the only power. So I can't really answer, oh, well, you can move some rocks. No, it's not about moving rocks. <laughs> it's about being, beingness with a capital B. And as beingness expands, it's beautiful and powerful. Like, I mean, people who have had near-death experiences or spiritual transformative experiences who experience interacting with source, <laughs> they convey power, but also amazing total love. That, that's the tr true power is the love of surrender and, 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 and who we what we really are being this itself. That is, that is the power. So when we can take that being this and reflect it here in a circumstance, that's powerful. Let's say you've got an illness. Let's say you just heard you, you just heard you got a really terrible illness. How do you meet that moment? That's powerful. You meet it with love and openness. That, that's power. Yeah. We like we like to take words like power and then define them. You know, we're like, oh, okay, I, I got these words. Okay, so what what is this? And we always want to know what is this thing? What is this thing? It's bigger than that. <laughs> Unfortunately, unfortunate to the thinking mind. <laughs> So uh, she was asking, um, uh, she's wondering if we have color, like are, are different souls, different colors? So like green rays or like this idea of the different rays, do are we perceived as color or are we all white? She asks. I've, I've experienced color in, out of, in uh, non-physical realities. I'll just, I'll just say that. And, I've, and I know that I've had experiences where I've, and uh, uh, where I've engaged another being and the quality of their nature is full of much including color and vibration and sound and uh, again we like to say what is that thing you know what is what's the sight i know green so is there green well actually green's kind of a good example because the one out of body experience i had all i did is look at the grass it was this reality system it had grass and the grass was the most beautiful grass i ever saw it was vibrant alive the green was so green and so beautiful that i spent i felt like i could look at the grass all day <laughs> and be completely full of joy because the grass was so green <laughs> so there's color <laughs> what other reality systems do you remember um i'm not going to try to uh define that from here i think i would i think i'd be very uh i think i'd be very incorrect to do that <laughs> is there is there another one or one other that you can i, I can i'd probably try to categorize at least a couple uh, i've had out-of-body experiences that i would say are like very local where i see this world like one time i was walking down my steps this is kind of a funny story but i i, had, I was walking down this, my stairs and i was out of body so i gave myself permission to get up from bed and i got up from bed but i didn't actually get up from bed my body was still in bed so i'm walking down the steps and I'm like, am I out of body? <laughs> just, something just didn't, it wasn't quite right. But it was perfectly normal. Like it was so normal. So I'm walking down the stairs. I'm feeling the carpet in between my toes. And I'm feeling the cracks in the wall. And I get to the bottom of the stairs. And I actually concluded I was not out of body because it was so normal. Hmm. And, I, and I actually thought to myself, I'm the only guy in my city walking down his stairs, wondering if he's out of body. Like I actually felt <laughs> dumb. Cause I'm always exploring. I'm always trying to ask the question because you got to like have that mindset if you're going <laughs> to. So, but then I got to the bottom of the stairs and the light was just a little bit different. And I'm like, mm, maybe I still am in a body. So how else can I test it? Cause I could feel the wall. I could feel the carpet. 
So I decided to try to walk through the, fr- the wall in the front of my house. And I did, I walked through it and I was in the front yard. And I was like, oh, it's a good God. test. Oh my gosh, I'm mad about it. So that was one experience. Uh, but th- I think that's actually the only time I've had an experience where I was that like local in my house kind of thing. Um, but I've had other experiences that are um, in vibrant, like rich colored, vibrant realities that are just alive with color and vibrancy. It's the only way I can, it's the only way I can put it. Mm. I've also had experiences where I've interacted with someone. I've had four times. So I, have, I like to do this little experiment when I, if, I'm, if my body's asleep and I have a non-physical experience with somebody, I like to try to prove it the next day, like a, like a hobby. <laughs> so if I meet the person, I usually try to get their attention in a way that I can confirm with them when we wake up. So, uh, and I've had four successes so far. I've probably had five or six failures, but I've had four successes, which is pretty cool. That is cool. Um, That's very cool. Um, uh, so another question um, is wondering, someone's wondering about, she was wondering about um, uh, that as spirit, uh, that we, can we travel through all the different dimensions? So she said, like, like seven through 12, then 10 through 22. Uh, she recently learned that someone who had six near-death experiences that there are 22 dimensions and after 10, it's like either we get to uh, create galaxy and planets. Anyway, she's wondering what your impression is of all that. So the answer is yes. Uh, I won't speak to the number of realities. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I don't know the number of dimensions. Um, But I do know that consciousness itself is always connected to all other things. Always. There is no separation, truly. The con- what consciousness am I talking about? Your consciousness. Like right now, the you that's listening, the aliveness that you feel in your body, the I, that I is the movie screen that the physical universe is playing on. And you don't have to have a physical movie playing on it. This is just a metaphor. That consciousness, that I, that's you right now, is the same I that is connected to all things and can experience other reality systems there's a a good quote by the guide seth seth speaks Mm -hmm. i love seth seth's great says something like reality physical reality is a bright point is like a bright point of light that you just never look away from but you can and i love that because it takes some takes some getting used to because here in this reality we get super deep (laughs) super dense (laughs) super focused super labels super physical super worries super pain all the stuff so it takes some, uh, you know, some serious uh, practice usually to even achieve silence of thought. You need to be able to experience what you really are, which is awareness of self, and without having thought constantly bombard you constantly. And then once you are thought itself, or I mean, not thought itself, beingness itself, awareness itself, you will find non-physical things will rise to you all on their own. Like you don't go get it. At least it's not how I experience it. They just, they just come because they're in you already. Like think of it this way. It's in you. It's not that you are stuck in this place and you've got to go somewhere else. No, the physical location, discrete location is an illusion. Like right now you're on the West coast, right? I'm in the Eastern time zone. No, not really. What's really happening is we're engaged in this mutual environment that we perceive as the physical world that has context, really good context. But ultimately, there is, that's all, uh, it's, you're not really that face that I see on the screen. I'm not really this. We are already connected in the, in the higher state right now. Like you don't have to, you're already on the other side of the veil right now. So when you were um, when when you were brought a life, what were you what were you doing? You said they brought it to you. So presumably you were in the midst of something else. What were you doing? Were you so I have, where were you? Yeah, I used the I used the word frolicking in the last video because it, it fit, like I think that's a close English word. Like I remember being in a realm of golden light and just uh, I don't know prancing is the wrong <laughs> word, but just like just enjoying being and moving and i remember engaging in some activities that we might call like communication create creative endeavors visiting places all very fast but i won't i'm not going to try to like go anymore into that i don't think because i think 
it's just not right for me to do that from here. Is it because like I said, we want to know like, oh, what objects were there? We're really curious about environments, you know, because we live in a physical environment. So we think the, the reality is an environment. <laughs> like, you know, we think we look around, we see this environment, all reality, this is what reality is. So now I want to know what other, you know, I'm not saying that environments aren't important. They are, they're, they're really cool. I mean, we, we create environments in this reality and in others. It's just that we're, we're bigger than just the, uh, the objects or the places anyway. So I, that makes sense. I think it's, it relates back to what you were saying about when they were trying to explain the life to you, they were focused more on how you would feel at different stages of the life versus the specifics of the reality. Um, it's how it is to be it. Mm -hmm. like what yeah. is it like? Like right now, if, if, uh, if you were going to have a conversation with a non-physical person, you know, would they be, would, would they be asking you like, you know, what did you do at work today? And no, it's what, who are you? What is it to be you? What? And then you, you and then you, what you share is exactly what it's like to be you. Exactly what you're feeling, exactly what your perspective is exactly. You know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> it's not about the, the, I mean, the things happen, the context happens, the actions happen, the job happens. That's okay. And that's a part of it. That's meaningful. But really what you're experiencing is what it's like to have that experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's, that's amazing. It's totally amazing. I'm, um, I've been told by the angels that one of the things that's coming on, on earth after this awakening is that we will develop that same empathic telepathy here. Um, and they said it'll bring world peace, that people, that negotiations will go more smoothly because of the fact that people and people who don't necessarily understand what's happened to them, they won't know why it is, but they'll all of a sudden know that they can't, that all of a sudden they understand each other's point of view and that they, they the negotiations will go more smoothly and it'll lead to peace. It makes sense to me because it's what we, it's how we naturally are. So it makes sense to me. I mean, I don't, I don't have any knowledge specifically on that topic, but it makes sense to me that we would eventually reach a place evolution wise where we're able to do that here too. Uh, yeah. The, the, yeah. I, I, I also remember knowing that this real, this whole universe is not the first time we've done this. This is a, uh, this is like the next level. What do you mean? preceding levels, like preceding unit. <laughs> this sounds great. I know that this guy, you said go full woo here. Dude, <laughs> full no, woo. I know. I know so, everybody's so leaning full in woo right now. Is that, that this, this universe is not the first time. Uh, <laughs> In fact, I have a memory. Part of the pre-birth memory is uh, I remember uh, the this moment that that there was this intention being issued forth from source and and through all of us, like we were all involved to do this universe. Uh, and it was not the first time. The veil has been used. A veil of I like, I like to think of the veil as like a consciousness technology, like a spirit technology. And this is not the first time there's been a veil. Earth is not the first time. This whole universe is not the first time. But, but I do remember feeling that this universe had a new level of low, like density, like a new challenge level to take to the next level of expansion. Wow. And I feel like, and I feel like even talking about this is something that really would not have fit even a few years ago. So I feel like now is the time we're all kind of trying to like, remember <laughs> a little bit, remember. That's why we're doing things like this. <laughs> so do you do you have a memory of, you said that, that there was a, a universe before and then that one, this is sort of universe 2.0. Um, or I don't, I don't remember how many or what. I just, yeah. More than 2.0. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's not, it's not like the second, I don't know. It, <laughs> this, do, do you there's know cycles? What? There's big cycles. There's okay. like the, like an in-breath and an out, but huge um, cycles. Okay. Okay. Interesting. And then a in creation. the retraction of that breath is the energy of that universe just re neutralized and reused. Well, and uh, the way I experienced it was the universe was not, um, uh, I don't want to say it's not real because it is real, but it's not, it's, it's not really real. It's, it's like a, uh, it's like a virtual reality, like a video game, maybe. Okay. So we're, but it's a really real video game <laughs> that we get to create together. And, uh, and 
there's the in-breath and out-breath I'm talking about is, is the churning of billions of years of, of mm -hmm. experience. And mm -hmm. then all the integration of that goes along with that for countless beings. That's another important point. Um, there's a lot of topics here. The, the, there's only so many slots on earth. There's only so many characters that can be played. There's only so many people and only so many animals and only so many choices. And uh, there's way more conscious beings than there are slots on earth. Uh, and, and in fact, I've, I've read, and I, 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 I intuit this is correct, but the number of guides there are helping us outnumber the number of players in the game, outnumber the number of humans. So anyway, um, being given the opportunity to play a human <laughs> is super, super rare, awesome, an amazing opportunity. Like it's like being handed the most precious gift in the universe because you know from that side there are only so many, man. Like there's only so many, and and being human is like, oh my gosh, like really, like holy. And the and the irony, of course, is that all of us here, so many of us just want to get out. <laughs> you know, we're like we're just we're done with this. But I'm telling you, this is a gift. Every one of these wonderful people listening today, and I got to say, like the energy that I'm getting from all these people, holy cow, you guys are awesome. The, every one of us has been given a gift to come here and to do our part, to, to live, to live. And when I say do our part, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to say like, we came to do this task. You know, we like to think in duality, like, okay, I'm going to do this action. It's more about being you. The real you, the loving, joyful you in your life, where you are. Just do that. Just be you. Be the real you. And as you do that, we will bring love to the world. Because love is what we are. We are loving beings. We're not twisted, fearful beings. We do get temporarily twisted up in the many pains of this life. We do get abused. And we do suffer. And we get sick and Eventually, our bodies even die, you know, so it's super crazy, but that is not who we really are. So you're allowed, you have permission, not from me, <laughs> just because of who you are, not from anybody. You have permission to not take the play so seriously. You can be yourself, have fun. It's, it's fun. Make it fun. Enjoy what you want to enjoy. Let go of what you want to let go of. Be the person that you feel you should be. And, and you know what? That's not easy. <laughs> like, I'm, not, I'm like not a master at this or something. Like I'm just another <laughs> <laughs> flawed individual trudging my way through the, you know, the muck. But, um, but if we choose to meet this day, this moment with openness, it's very powerful. That small stuff is the big stuff. You know, our, and our, that's something that guides tell us a lot. The little things are the big things. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is where the power is. So you don't have to worry about solving a huge crisis and fixing the whole world and making all your money and all that stuff. Just meet this moment, this day, the best you can. That's it. Have fun. Love the person next to you. Love yourself. Yes. Face your fears. That's a big one. When you, um, when, so you, you were saying how um, being here is such a gift. And so when you told your guides that you decided you wanted to try to come to earth, was there like, what determined whether or not or when you were able to go? Was there, what, like you said, these spots are, are difficult to come by. Was so in my case, I actually did not remember specifically asking for earth. I just asked for a life that fulfilled mm -hmm. my intentions and they brought me the human life. I don't even know if my last incarnation was human. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just, I just know that, um, that knowing that it was a human life here and seeing my parents who would be, I had so much respect for them. It was incredible. The amount of respect I had for those players. Um, I'm calling them players. But see, the thing is like, I, Okay, so I'm seeing them from that side as the mother and father. Those are their characters. I respected them, like the player who is the character, you know, like, uh, because, because the, the player, the, the, the soul, is who you really are. Yeah. And, and from their side, you know that, and you respect that the soul is playing as this certain character and, you know, 
it's it's, a, it's such such an admirable thing <laughs> to be seen from the other side looking at a human at a human life. It's just incredible. So April was asking, and I think I think April, what he meant was she, you're asking uh, why are the guides on Earth outnumber the non guide people? I think he was saying that the guides that are helping the people on Earth outnumber the people on Earth. I just meant that, yeah, I meant non-physical beings that are participating in the earth play outnumber the physical human players. Although we're aware that there are many guides on earth right now to help with the ascension. So I think that's why that was a little ambiguous. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, no, it's just, it's amazing to think about then the perspective that you bring, because I think that all of us are, 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 um, all, you know, everybody that's here in this group has had their own different experiences of uh, spirituality and, and, um, and that, you know, from all different aspects. Um, but what's amazing is, like I said, to hear this, this first person recount of what you've seen and felt and had the real, real experience of to have a first person description um, is just mind bending. Um, totally I, I, I actually find it, a, I appreciate that, but it's, I don't feel that way because I actually find it a little bit comical that everybody doesn't remember because yeah. it is, it is a little bit, it's, <laughs> it's just a little <laughs> bit funny. It's a little bit funny because it's not, um, you, we all will remember. No, it's not, it's not that remarkable. Yeah. What, so, uh, Sean is asking, um, uh, that she has a lot of clients that really struggle to have a baby and she has, and her, her belief is that there's a lineup of souls waiting to be human but yeah. why is it so hard for them? And she's wondering what else she can do to help the people who are, because she tries to help them raise their vibration. And she's wondering what else you can do to help them. Okay, well, the first half of that question is why? So, okay, so the goal of, uh, oh boy, I'm gonna, <laughs> the words are really hard here. The physical reality operates according to its rules. You know, it's law, so biological laws included, okay? So then spirit knows the laws and looks in on the system. Like, okay, imagine you like program a video game, like the World of Warcraft or something, you know, and you've got, you've got stuff going on in the game and certain things happen, certain things can't happen. And you just, you just work with what you can because the game is how it is. Except in this case, the game kind of is evolving and going on its own. But anyway, so there's these, there's these constraints that we're all, that are applying to us, including things that may prevent people from having children or health problems or whatever else. And there's also a bunch of non-physical activities happening. There's a, there's a lot of manifestation happening. There's intention. There's a lot of probabilities being bumped and nudged all over the place. You know, some people might have fear of not having a child and then they, you know, maybe push away the probability of having a child. And there's a lot of that stuff going on and I can't possibly speak to all that. But so I'm just saying for the first part of the question, some of it is just the way the physical reality plays out. Sometimes, it's, unfortunately, it's just how the body works sometimes. But as to what they can do, um, boy, I mean, my, actually my sister struggled with this. Uh, I, I, have a, I have a lot of respect for, for women who go through that. Um, I feel like, I feel like as, a, as a male, I'm like, it's like impossible for me to actually feel what a woman feels that can't have a child i know it i know how deep it is in them <laughs> um and i'm actually chuckling because i told my i told my wife many times that i, I kind of wish i could <laughs> have a baby wish because i remember being female but anyway um i would say that that so all the things in this life that we experience all, all, there's a lot of needs that the human has need for food need for reproduction need for you know security need for whatever some money and and love uh, physical, like, you know, all those things that, that we think we need, we do feel fear when we don't get that stuff. You know, if someone tells you, you're not going to have your food anymore, you, you know, most people are going to feel fear <laughs> and not having, not being able to, to have a baby is, is pretty similar actually. And I think in the sense that we are hardwired to do that. So I don't, so just as a general comment, then when we have fear, that's linked to something that is wired into what we are as humans, I think it's important that we, I know this sounds so simple and trite and, and oversimplified, but we need to accept. Because when we, when we it's, it's the resistance that hurts. 
And typically when we resist, we're not helping ourselves. Typically when we resist, we're making it difficult or pushing things away. And it's the deepest intent that is nudging the probabilities. So a lot of people might say, okay, I really want to have a baby. So now I'm going to tell myself I don't want to have a baby so that I can have a baby. But really your deepest intent is you, you, still, you still really want. So what you have to do is work with your own fears. I know it's a very broad comment. Find the fears. Find Like if you feel an inadequacy pop up, meet it. Be a why. Why do I feel that way? You know what? And, that, and then as you feel that, allow yourself to feel it. Allow yourself to find what is the negative self-belief I'm holding on to here and, and, and be brave enough to work with it. And if you get to the root, that, that might help. Yeah, and so I know the question was about like a lineup of souls. It's not like they're, I don't want to say, I, my perception was not like they're pushing or pushing in line and please make this baby be available. It's not like that at all. Like I said, the system is operating and then as their opportunities, they are, they are happily utilized. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's not the mother's fault. I mean, in my case, it was my fault. It's still my fault. I don't even know who that person was. But I know I'm responsible even now. And you know what I mean? So <laughs> nothing to do with the poor mom. She probably, you know what I mean? <laughs> she didn't know there's a spirit coming from another dimension that like <laughs> had fear issues, you know? <laughs> so, um, so she was asking, uh, she's wondering about um, the, is earth the only 3d reality? And, um, and is this, is this earth the most beautiful place in the universe? Uh, okay so i'll i'm gonna say no this is not the only 3d reality so first of all we have our whole universe and it has many opportunities within it not just earth okay don't we we like to think of other planets as other no our whole universe is one place there's other planets there's a whole system it's big billions and billions and billions of stars okay that's one system and i and i have some awareness that there are other systems <laughs> and I don't know anything about those systems, but they're there. So there are many opportunities, both in our reality system. And I, I believe others as well. And as to whether earth is the most beautiful, my opinion because it's all subjective is no, <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel that there is greater beauty uh, in higher realms, the higher, the beauty of the higher realms is unspeakable. Uh, so I'm not saying, you know, earth isn't beautiful. It has, it has beauty, but yeah. I, I personally wouldn't say it's the most beautiful experience of form possible. <laughs> Sounds like that green grass was, was awfully beautiful. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, if anybody else has any other questions, go ahead and ask them now. But I think this has been, for me, this has just been so incredible. This, your story, as soon as I heard it, I couldn't wait to have you come in and, and share it with us. Um, because I feel like it's stuff that we all, we all know about, we, we read about, we learn about it from various sources, but you are the first person I met that can stand there and tell me from first person experience, what you're, you're not, you know, not from a regression. And I, cause I know that a lot of people go through past life regression, which is made like Wendy was talking about in the comments, she, she leads past life regressions. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but in this case, it was your actual live memory, which is just amazing. So that's, that's a, such, such a gift to have you share that with us. Um, and it's wonderful. I think it's wonderfully encouraging because it is, it's such a confirmation of all the things that we feel and that we suspect and that we intellectually know, but that we don't have direct experience of anymore in terms of our memory. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm in a really weird place because on one hand, it's extremely personal and it's also impossible to articulate. And also I feel like it's such a small amount of memory. Uh, you know, who am I? You know, I'm not a new death experience or I'm just some guy. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, on the other hand, I really feel that the awakening as, as we're, we're, what we're using is happening. Uh, we do need to talk to each other and we are allowed <laughs> <laughs> to, to test this. It's not like the veil is like, you know, you got a moral imperative not to uh, play. You know, we're here to play. Yeah. So I'll take the risk. I, I'm, you know, I'm just deciding to take the risk. It could be to put myself out there a little bit and say, we're not human. <laughs> you're not human. You're you. <laughs> the you the, this is important. The you that feels like you to you is who you are. Yeah. That you, you think is human is not. The you that feels like you to you is who you are. 
And, and, and it's funny because one time after meditating, I had this experience where I became aware of all these other lives I had lived. Just, I saw these spheres. I knew that I was, I was them. And it was like, the biggest shock to me of this moment was like, oh my gosh, that's me. Like I did that. It wasn't like other people that were me. No, it was me. Like the me that feels like me to me, what did those things? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's just, so it is the I, and that I is not just, uh, not just this character. So I, I, I think it's important that we remind each other of that because our society is pretty darn uh, unaware overall. Yeah. Uh, our world, our world, especially up till now has been largely asleep. We've got some serious fear issues yeah. going on in the collective, you know, we're working mm-hmm. through them. And, uh, you know, as we do that individually, that, that is what we got to do is meet our fear individually. And then that helps the collective and we're participating in that valuable process. So, yeah, if, so I think it's important to remind each other. I'm, I'm happy to speak with anybody who would like to, uh, you know, it's just going to make connections with people. And can you share the name of your blog? Christian writes a yeah. blog. Yeah, it's a walk in the physical. A, a walk, walk in the physical.com. A walk in added, the physical or a, a, a walk in the physical.com. Perfect. Uh, I, I haven't added anything lately because I only write when I'm spirit led <laughs> on that blog. <laughs> I don't just sit down and write. And and I'm I'm trying to turn that into a book. I'm in the process of doing it. So I'm like maybe 90% through. Super and cool. I, yeah, so I because I want to try to put it in some framework that is helpful, hopefully. Wonderful. And, uh, yeah. Well, you've gotten so many thank yous here. Wendy Edwards says, thank you. This was wonderful. She says, I feel so comfortable with the knowing being more validated. Thank you, Christian. Um, Edie says, this is a wonderful eye-opening gift. So grateful for this talk. Sheila I'm says, it lands like remembering, and that's cool. It resonates, resonates deeply. Thanks, Christian. And Mina says, thank you for sharing these profound experiences. Patty says, we are immensely grateful for this talk. Thank you, Christian. Teresa says, the veil is thinning. We will so, so be so surprised by what we encounter. And Jen says, thank you, Christian. Really well articulated. You convey a much larger perspective than words can convey. Thanks for being you. Yeah, Barbara says, support each other. Peter says, the act on the stage with the 3D life. Sheila, uh, Shelly, thank you, Christian, for your experiences are amazing. Sheila says, thank you, Christian. Very helpful and timely. Thank you, Anne. You're very welcome. Thank you. And so anyways, thank you. Get it. Rock on, dude. Yeah, that's thank right, you. Barbara. <laughs> no, I, I really appreciate everybody that's here. I, I can see all these faces on the screen. Yes. And I'm telling you what, like, this is a group of masters. You know, I, there's a lot of potential and power here. And it's an, it's an honor to even talk with you. Um, I appreciate it very much. And uh, thank all of you for everything you're doing in your lives right now. And thank you for being human. Like you may not, when you woke up this morning, you probably didn't think you're like a superhero for getting out of bed and brushing your teeth, but you are. So thank you for doing that. And when you wake up tomorrow, it's okay to remind yourself of that, you know, that you are a superhero. So yeah, I I just, I I just, I feel like that's like the one thing I just want to share with everybody is just it's cool. Like, thank you for being you and for being here. And you're like, you have guides like watching over you, cheering you on too. And you know, you're, you're not alone. So and for those of you who'd, who'd like the link, uh, Michael and Sandy just posted it in the comments. I will I be, I recorded okay. this and I'll be posting the recording both in the, uh, on YouTube and on the wisdom soup face, uh, wisdom soup, YouTube channel. So If you go onto YouTube, you'll see it there. Just type in wisdom soup. Or I'll also be posting it in my Spirit Means Business Facebook group. So either place, if you want to watch it again, you can find it there. And like I said, you can contact Christian through his blog. Thanks so much for spending the evening with us, Christian. This is just as good as I thought it was going to be even better. So it's just amazing. So great thank to spend you, time with you. So thanks, hey, everybody. Thank you. Wonderful to see you guys. And I'll be sending out the next invitation. Again, we'll be rather than doing second Thursday, it'll be a couple days early. If you haven't seen my videos about what's coming on the 11th, <laughs> do go check it out. There's some big stuff happening. I want to make sure, <coughs> excuse me, that everybody is prepared because it is something we do need to be prepared for. So thanks so much. And I will say goodbye for now.